Hello folks, is it possible to do a comedy routine with a vacuum cleaner and sound effects? You bet you can! And here we go! Las Vegas, of course, has nothing around it but sand. And desert. And then more sand and more desert. So when you fly in at night, of course, you see nothing. You look out the window of the plane, it's black. So, you know, if you see half a dozen lights every now and then, you figure, eh, it could be a fishing boat, it could be flying over the water, you don't know where you are. Then, of course, you look up ahead, you see this big ball of light in the middle of the desert, which, of course, is Las Vegas. So you know you're in the right place, you know you're heading in the right direction. And then, of course, when you land and you get into the airport, you realise, of course, that you're in the gambling capital of the world, simply because you're surrounded by poker machines, or slot machines, as the Americans like to call them, and everybody is playing these things. I, I hope... Seriously, that these people have missed a flight or they're waiting for a plane. They have to think they come all the way to Las Vegas just to play the airport. But we had bigger plans. We wanted to get out of the place, go into the hotel, look around before we started to work. So we headed down to the luggage collection area. Now, this is a big area in McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, simply because it has to be. They have 20 million visitors a year to Las Vegas. Just plug it so in. So they've got to have people, you know, all over the place, gathering up the luggage, getting on these big boats, <laughs> getting it out of the place. Now, as you're waiting there with people from all over the world, you look up and they've got these big video screens up there now. Now, on the video screens, they tell you everything. Oh, no, 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 no. It's like, it's the big production shows, the casinos, the hotels, everything. It's on these screens. So we're waiting there, and as we look up, every now and then, on a couple of these screens would come the four kinsmen from Australia. Contact! Well, we're going crazy. We're nudging each other. <laughs> And to be honest with you, nobody cared. Nobody cared. So we thought, all right, we'll, we'll cut our losses here and we'll move out. So we've got the bags and we head out and get the cabs. Now, outside the airport, there's probably 30 or 40 cabs lined up, simply because they a lot of people, of course, to bring to and from the airport. Now, on the backs of the cabs, now, they've got this big plaque. Just advertising. But on these ones, of course, they tell you... on the backs of these plants. What about seven or eight of them it has got the four kinsmen from Australia? Well, we're telling everybody, we're telling the cab driver, hey, we're on the back of your cab. And he didn't care much either, to be honest. His question was, what do they want Australian performers in Las Vegas for? We got hundreds of them. I thought, well, that's true. You don't really need them. But you see, let me tell you, Australians, Americans are fascinated by Australia. Australia. Australians, everything, going way, way back to the kangaroos and the boomerangs and the didgeridoos. Mm. But now, the didgeridoo, they're fascinated, let me tell you, by the didgeridoo. And I'm quite a for myself. I mean, we've all seen one, haven't we? It's just a hollowed out piece of wood. Beautifully decorated, beautifully painted, but it is a hollow piece of wood. Now, thousands of years ago, the Aboriginal people sat down with this thing and thought, now, what are we going to do with this thing? So they probably tried to blow all sorts of different noises through it to come up with something they could use in their day-to-day their -day rituals, their tribal goings-on. Until finally one day they came up with this thing called circular breathing. Mm -hmm. This is where they take the air in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. In and out. In and out. Now once they've got this flow of air happening, that's when they create the tone of the didgeridoo. And it is a unique sound. And I mean, sometimes you're away from home, you're sitting in your room by yourself and you're a little bit homesick. You think you can hear this sound in the back of your... In the... <laughs> It's just your imagination. It's just because you are a little bit homesick. Now, we're telling this cab driver this, and he's getting a little bit excited about this. So we're adding a little bit more to the story. We're telling him how the Aboriginal people bring in the sound of the bush and the dream time and the, and the animal life of Australia into the sound of the didgeridoo. In fact, it's more like a storytelling instrument than a, than a musical instrument in many ways. <laughs> 